Hey church family, thanks for joining me tonight for Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, I am outside again using my neighbor's house really kind of as a prop, as a visual, as a reminder of a job that needs to be completed um, as a project that needs to be uh, repaired. Uh, actually, the last couple of weeks I mentioned that this house has uh, sat uh, with no action uh, for quite a while. And just this week, the city approved some uh, permits and work began. And it already in a week's period of time is beginning to look a little bit better. It's amazing that when you put some time and effort into something, how it can make a significant change in a short period of time. We've been discussing and studying the subject of forgiveness uh, from the book of Philemon. And forgiveness is a necessary part of our Christian growth. It is a priority in the life of a Christian and in our relationship with the Lord. And, you know, the challenge for you and for me is in our lives to make sure that we are quick to forgive. And for some of us, we hold on to things for a long time. Uh, we justify, make excuses and uh, the, the reality is, as long as we do that, and as long as we do not seek to repair and to move forward and to take action in these broken and uh, hurtful and unforgiving uh, relationships, uh, things in our lives will sit dormant, and God does not desire that. And so we are really studying this subject of forgiveness. And uh, tonight I want to continue. It's our third week. And uh, I want us to look in the book of Philemon. And in Philemon, again, if you're just joining us, uh, we are introduced to a young man named uh, Onesimus. And he had been a servant, a slave, an employee, as it were, of a man named Philemon. And what they had in common was the Apostle Paul. And what we find is Onesimus wronged or hurt Philemon. He ran away, he escaped, perhaps he uh, stole some goods. But whatever he did, he wronged Philemon. And he ended up wandering and making his way to the great metropolitan city of Rome. And it was there that coincidentally he met the Apostle Paul. And we know that God is always at work. Uh, we made mention of that a few weeks ago, that uh, God is working in everybody's lives. And even people who have hurt us or offended us, the truth is God is working in their life. And through uh, these events, Paul meets Onesimus. Onesimus becomes a believer in Jesus Christ. And in their discussions and part of Onesimus' growth, he mentions that he had wronged, he had hurt, he had offended a man named Philemon who coincidentally Paul knew. Paul had led Philemon to the Lord many years before. And so Paul writes a letter uh, to Philemon and he sends Onesimus to Philemon with the letter. And in essence, the whole uh, purpose of this meeting was to seek reconciliation and to ask for forgiveness. And Paul really details the importance of that. Jesus over and over reminded us to forgive. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, we are told to forgive uh, as Christ uh, asked God to forgive us. We are forgiven by God because of Jesus Christ. And so uh, we are to forgive because we're commanded to do that. And we're to forgive because we have been recipients of forgiveness. And last week we spoke about not only the priority, but the picture. When we forgive other people, whether they deserve it or not, uh, it's a tremendous picture of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Uh, Philemon, uh, Paul would write to Philemon uh, in verses 17. Uh, he says, look, Philemon, if you won't forgive Onesimus because um, it's the right thing to do, then receive him as though you're receiving me. In essence, do it for my sake. Verse 18, if he hath wronged thee or if he owes you anything, put it on my account. Um, 
verse 19, and I, Paul, have written it with my own hand, I will repay it. Uh, do it for my sake. And again, what a great picture. The Bible tells us that uh, Jesus gave himself, Philippians chapter 2, humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, that Jesus died uh, in our place. He was our substitute, John would write in 1 John chapter 2, our propitiation. He took our place and, as it were, went to the great throne in heaven with his blood, the, the, the offering needed. Uh, the, the, the blood of bulls and goats wasn't sufficient, but the perfect blood of Jesus Christ. And God forgives us because of Jesus Christ. That's why he's the mediator. That's why Jesus would say he was the door. He was the way, the truth, and the life. And so when we forgive, we show that same example. We show that same picture of what Christ has done for us. If you'll remember in Matthew chapter 6, uh, we uh, know this passage as the model prayer. Some refer to it as the Lord's Prayer. But Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. And you'll remember in this prayer, there's a time for us to pray, God forgive us. And in verse 12, it says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And that's important. We're not just to pray, hey, God, please forgive us. Thanks a lot. Amen. But we're to do so in the same fashion or in uh, the same measure that we forgive others. And when you think about that, how inconsistent and how hypocritical have we often been that we want God to forgive us fully and quickly uh, and readily, and yet we are not willing to forgive others uh, quickly, and readily, nor fully. As a matter of fact, Jesus would go back, he would circle back at the end of the prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. But verse 14, hey, I don't want you to miss this. Jesus said, look, if you forgive men their trespasses, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. He just reminds us that it is necessary for us to practice forgiveness if we want to be forgiven. And I want you to see a, a very clear uh, example of this as we continue to think about the picture, the pattern, the example we have been given uh, by Jesus, uh, and then the picture that we are now to, to reveal uh, to others uh, as we practice forgiveness. If you'll notice in Matthew 18, the Bible says that um, Peter comes to Jesus in verse 21, and he says, Now, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times. Now, how often are we to forgive people? That's a valid question. Uh, the Pharisees taught that uh, if you would uh, do better than the law, uh, the law was eye for eye, tooth for tooth, but if you would forgive, not just even once nor twice, but if you would forgive a person three times, then you had far excelled and exceeded the law standard and you were a really good person. And after that, you would not be required to forgive anymore. Um, so Peter, when speaking to Jesus, says, Jesus, if my brother, and again, Often the people closest to us are the ones that seem to hurt us most. Um, we can sometimes take it from strangers and the people that should know better. That's hard sometimes to, to process how they could hurt us. Anyway, having said that, Peter said, uh, what if I forgive that person seven times? Jesus, you're teaching us a new way. And um, we, we kind of see under this thing that you're calling grace, that the standards are raised. Uh, how many times do I forgive someone? Seven times. And by the way, have you ever noticed that when you and I are trying to calculate exactly how much we need to do in order to be okay, um, usually that speaks to our heart's intent, and, and usually that reveals that 
we're not looking to go over and above board uh, when we're trying to do just enough to appease and satisfy God and be right in God's eyes, but yet not have to do any more than we need to. And that's not what grace is. Grace is God's unmerited favor. And as children of God, we're to show grace and we're to have mercy and we're to practice forgiveness as he did. So Peter, though, thinking this is a good uh, offer, hey, what if I more than double even what the Pharisees and the religious leaders teach? What if we forgive someone seven times? Is that enough? And so Jesus uh, tells a story. By the way, and we'll talk about this a little bit more next week, but uh, really what is forgiveness and what do we mean when we uh, uh, say to practice forgiveness? But it's important to understand that to to forgive someone doesn't mean that you act like it didn't happen or that life goes back to normal. Uh, obviously, uh, much like this fence behind me, uh, when you've been hurt, especially if you've been hurt repeatedly, you have to put up barriers and boundaries at times and the parameters perhaps of one's relationship needs to be changed. Uh, but you and I can still practice forgiveness. So um, we'll speak more about that next week, but uh, Jesus uh, is not saying, hey, just go on and act like nothing ever happened and let people continually abuse you and hurt you, uh, especially if there's a pattern there. That's not what Jesus is saying. However, he is saying, make sure that you and I do forgive. And forgiveness is really releasing them into God's hands. Uh, and we need to do that because that's what was done for us, because that's what's been commanded. It's a priority to God, and it has to be a priority for us, and it allows us to look like our Heavenly Father. Jesus said, let me, let me uh, illustrate this for you, Peter. Verse 23, and, uh, well, verse 22, I'm sorry, Jesus said, no, how about 70 times 7? Now, if you want to do quick math, you realize that's 490 times. And what you realize is Jesus is, uh, in an absurd type of way, saying, sure, Peter, keep a notebook, you know, get your iPhone out and keep track how many times you, you forgive your brothers. And once you hit that 490 mark, then you're free to stop practicing forgiveness. He doesn't say that. In essence, he's in some ways jesting and he's really showing Peter how foolish it is to try to keep score or keep count. The idea being just practice forgiveness as often as, as much as is needed. And so here's the picture. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, verse 23, is like a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And by the way, at times we take account, we need to, of our friends, of our family. And again, we're not to ignore hurts and we're not to ignore offenses. They fester in us. They have to be addressed. And we spoke about that two weeks ago. So someone's hurt me and offended me. I need to say something. Verse 24. When this king began to wreck it, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. So this king is looking at all his employees and he's uh, trying to uh, give a good accounting. He's, he wants to uh, uh, really do an annual review if you want to look at it that way. And, He's trying to find who's been advantageous and who has been deceitful, who has failed, who has lacked, who has offended. And this one servant, this one employee is brought before the king and it is revealed that he owes the king 10,000 talents. They say, what would that be in today's economy, in today's valuation? It's really hard to get an exact number, but doing all the math and all the research that I've done, it would be somewhere approximately around $2 million that this man owed his boss, his king, about $2 million. Now, whether he stole that money, whether he was just uh, haphazard in his uh, responsibilities and wasted it or lost the money, but it was very clear that that money was owed to the king. Verse 25, and as much as he didn't have the money to pay, the Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had to the payment be made. And I would even venture to say that even uh, and back in those days and in this illustration, this man was the property of the king. He worked for the king and the king therefore had the right to to 
to uh, sell and to lend him out and to 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 do what he wanted to with this man's life really in essence this man owed the king his life but not only his life but his family his wife and his kids and i would venture to say that even putting all of the entire family to work and using them to be indentured servants um, he still would not recoup all that two million dollars that was owed to him but that's all he could get out of this delinquent servant and so um, he was going to take whatever he could get because it was owed him and again that's kind of our mentality at times I'm going to take whatever I can get and I'm going to do whatever I can do now notice the servant therefore fell down and he worshiped him saying Lord have patience with me and I will pay thee all the servant humbled himself the servant cried out for mercy he asked for more time and it's interesting he didn't say hey king please just forgive me of the debt but if you'll give me more time I own up to what I've done and I'll pay it back that's a good thing you know when we've done wrongly we need to own it take responsibility and uh, be willing to do what makes makes it right verse 27 but notice the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and he loosed him and forgave him the debt I mean far greater than this servant could have ever imagined when he humbled himself and he he was genuine and sincere uh, the king was moved with compassion letting go forgave him all the debt can you imagine what a what a day verse 28 the same servant went out later that day and he found one of his fellow servants it's not even a king uh, uh, servant relationship but just a, a fellow fellow servant and this guy owed the the first guy a hundred pence that would be equivalent today of approximately thirteen dollars so thirteen dollars his buddy owed him and notice he lays his hands on him the forgiven servant lays his hands on the guy who owes him thirteen dollars takes him by the throat and says pay me what you owe now right away what thoughts are going through your mind mine are uh, what a hypocrite and how could he have forgotten what happened and sometimes that's how I act you owe me 13 bucks you haven't paid me back yet and takes him by the throat now notice verse 29 and how apropos his fellow servant fell down at his feet and he besought him, he begged him, saying, Please have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And, and think about this. These are exact words that the forgiven servant had, had quoted to the king. That should jar his memory. Number two, this is a more realistic proposition. I can pay $13 back. Just give me a little more time, as opposed to the forgiven servant had asked for the same request and really uh, for an amount of money that for most of us in our lifetime would be an impossibility uh, to repay. And he asks, just give me a little more time. Verse 30, sad words, and he would not. He wouldn't do it. But he cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. And just think about that. How is a guy going to repay his debt if he's in prison? It just doesn't make sense. When... And that's the whole point of, of, of Jesus' illustration. Verse 31, when the fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then the king, after he had called the forgiven servant, said, You are a wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you desired me. Now shouldn't you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And the Lord was wroth, I mean, violently angry, outwardly angry. He delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Uh, this is how you want to live your life. 
then you will uh, experience the same condemnation and judgment that you gave to other people. And that really goes hand in hand with what Jesus taught. If I don't forgive other people, then how can I ask God to forgive me? And you see, the Bible says that he was, uh, the Bible says, uh, cast to the tormentors until he should pay what he owed. So likewise, verse 35, shall my heavenly Father do unto you, if from your heart you forgive not every brother his trespasses. We need to practice forgiveness. We have been forgiven a debt which we could never repay. We could never repay what we owe. Our offenses against the holy God and Jesus had compassion. Jesus paid the debt and loosed us. And when we repented and believed, we were washed white as snow and forgiven forever of all of our sin. How then can we say to our brother who offends us and hurts us that we will not forgive you? As a matter of fact, we will hold it against you and we will seek to actively punish you. How can we do that? If we are to be followers of Christ and we are to follow his example and to honor his name and not make a mockery of what he has done, much less if we want to be blessed by God and continue to be forgiven, we must practice forgiveness. And Paul said, Philemon, please forgive Onesimus as God has forgiven you. And I pray that we will remember the words of Jesus and his example. And when we feel infuriated and angry and get in the flesh, may God help us to stop and remember the great debt for which we have been forgiven. And may we uh, forgive others as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. And I pray that we'll take that challenge to heart tonight. We're going to pray. I want to invite you to pray with us. Check your email for your prayer list tonight. Please pray for the Tinsley family. Uh, Karen's brother had a stroke yesterday. They went to Pennsylvania and early this uh, Tuesday morning, um, uh, I'm sorry, he had a stroke Monday, early Tuesday morning. Uh, her brother went home to be with the Lord. Uh, pray for the Tinsleys. They've had bereavement here, her mother passing. Uh, recently and now her brother. Please keep them in prayer. Uh, my father-in-law had surgery on Sunday, but God was gracious and he came through it and he's recovering. Please continue, if you would, to pray uh, for him. Dear friend of ours, Lori Leparacci is having uh, surgery tomorrow uh, to remove a cancerous tumor. Uh, if you would remember to pray for Lori Leparacci, uh, that would mean a lot, not only to her, but to us. Uh, there's so many requests and burdens. Uh, I encourage you to pray for one another tonight. Uh, two of our missionaries, Jerry Harmon in Puerto Rico, has had such health problems with his heart over the years. Had to come to the States this week, and now he's not able to return to Puerto Rico. Um, they're working on him, and please keep him in prayer and, and all the efforts they're making on his heart, if you would do that. Um, and then pray for Lauren Richmond, church planter in Denver, Colorado. He had gallbladder surgery this week. Keep him in your prayers. So much to pray about. Our missionaries this week are Cannon and Nancy Bloom. You heard from them on Sunday. Be praying for them in Truth Baptist Church in Flushing. Uh, and uh, we look forward to praying together. Even though we're all not together, we can be praying together uh, this week. And then, uh, God willing, we'll see you this Saturday, perhaps, for the men and ladies' breakfasts. Uh, at noon uh, for the ladies at nine for the men and then we'll see you Sunday at church okay let's pray Lord thank you for this day pray that you would help us to forgive as you forgive help us Lord to follow your example and to always remember uh, the great debt that you paid for us Lord let us live like uh, you would have us to live and Lord let us I pray Lord practice forgiveness in our lives Bless us now as we pray together. Bless the remainder of this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you this weekend. And uh, be praying for one another, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.